Um, all right, let's uh, turn to networking uh, with the uh, with the NetBurner. Um, as you're aware, um, almost everything these days, uh, uh, almost all new products uh, are have an internet connection so that they can be uh, connected to the internet and reach from anywhere. Um, you know, often uh, via your mobile phone. Um, so and that's so that's one of the main top topics I wanted to cover in this class is at least the basics of networking. Uh, there's a lot to cover here. I think most of you have probably already taken the networking class, or so we'll take it next year, which goes into great more depth than I'll go into in this course. Um, but uh, today we won't actually get into network programming, which is the other side of it, but but concentrate instead on actually uh, kind of the network hardware and, and what makes TCP IP networks. So I'll have a brief introduction, talk about Ethernet, which isn't specifically part of TCP IP, it's, it's at a lower layer. layer. Uh, talk about TCP IP basics, uh, how the, and TCP IP is the protocol that's used by the internet. So talk about the basics of, of the internet essentially. And then we'll talk about uh, setting up the NetBurner board and then how to set up applications on our NetBurner, NetBurner so that they can use the, uh, the uh, internet and then also set them up so that we can download our programs over the, over the network link, which is a, a lot faster. Um, so the references for here are um, the NB Eclipse uh, uh, getting started guide uh, the what were what's this stand for the the NetBurner uh, programming guide and then the NetBurner uh, this is the NetBurner network device kit programming guide I think is what that stands for and then the NetBurner runtime library so all of those are in the in the documentation um, uh, um, the first two are fairly short. And then the last one, they've added a security uh, uh, documentation on some of the network security libraries. So we'll take a look at those um, in the future if we get a chance as well. So, um, okay. So you can program the NetBurner using the Ethernet connection. By that I mean transfer our programs over the Ethernet connection. That's much faster than programming over the serial link, but setting up that connection is slightly more complex and applications must be sp specifically written to support trans transfer over the Ethernet. In order for this to work you actually have to have an application running on the board that uh, supports this transfer of a, of a new program over the Ethernet link. So if that running application uh, crashes you won't be able to transfer a new program over over that Ethernet link, over that in, uh, network link, and then you have to fall back to the the serial link. But we know how to transfer programs over the serial link, so that's that's not an issue. So so just be aware that you know um, if for some reason you're unable to transfer a program over the the network link, it's probably due to the fact that your your running application on the board is crashed and you need to fall back to transferring over the serial link. Um, I think you'll enjoy transferring programs over the, the uh, network link. It, it is a lot faster. Of course, program transfer is not the main reason we, we want to use that internet uh, connection. We actually want to be able to do network programming. Con connect the NetBurner device and have it communicate with another NetBurner or another computer or mobile phone or whatever that's out on the internet somewhere. Uh, a couple other details, um, printf, scanf, io, um, you know, those still use the serial link. So, um, you know, e if you use printf to display information, you know, which is not common with the, with a networking link, uh, but be aware that printf and scanf will, will um, you'll have to um, see that output or enter input using our, our MTTY program that we've used in the past. Um, uh, to, there, we have to fall back on using read and write to send data over the network link and then um, it is possible that uh, whatever network, uh, depending on how that network is con con 
network link is configured and what we're connected to on the internet, the, uh, the other computer, which is our, probably our development computer, can display any information, but that's not, that's not done via printf and scanf, so we'll talk about that in the future. Uh, deb debugging requires two connections to the board, so the Ethernet and serial connections. So you know, again, during project development, I recommend that you hook both these up, hook both the network and serial connection up. Um, you know, for a fully networked application, which again most uh, um, uh, um, applications are these days, you know, there's not a serial connection. You would just have it connected to to the to the internet. Okay, a little bit about you know I, I've talked about the Ethernet and and the internet and they are completely different things. The Ethernet um, is this lower level um, you know physical connection. Uh, that describes how the the voltages on the on the cable between our computer and the net burner, uh, you know, the voltages, you know, the, the length of the packet, the the format of the frame, um, all that's all that's specified by the the Ethernet uh, specifications. Um, Ethernet again is not really part of TCP/IP. I TCP/IP, the protocol network of the internet. Can actually use any physical layer um, uh, connectors or connection. Ethernet is is a very common one. There have been some others that were used in the past for wired connections. Most of those are obsolete now, at least for for local area networks. And then you know for wired uh, networks, Ethernet is common, and then Wi-Fi is common for for wireless networks. But Every Ethernet device has um, a 48-bit Ethernet address. It's sometimes called the MAC or physical or hardware address. That's usually hardwired into the device by the manufacturer and can't can't be changed. Um, I say that, but uh, you know most network cards actually do allow you to. It, most modern network cards do do allow you to change that MAC address. There's almost um, no reason for ever doing so, though. Okay. So, um, computers or devices connected to the same local area network running Ethernet actually send data out using these Ethernet addresses, and I'll talk a little bit a little bit more about that. But um, um, you know, uh, for your computer to communicate with a, another computer on your on your local area network, it needs to get its its MAC address or Ethernet address. Often, it'll perform a a, a broadcast uh, requesting the uh, destination address or MAC address uh, for a particular computer that has a, a certain IP number. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But then the the packets that go out over the Ethernet network all have that Ethernet address in them. Uh, Ethernet devices are typically connected to a hub or switch using a standard cable. Uh, directly connecting to Ethernet cards requires a crossover cable. So you have two cables, a blue one and a red one. The blue one's a standard cable. The red one's actually a crossover cable. Actually, almost all modern computer uh, equipment will auto-detect, and you can use either cable. So use the red one if you ha if you have it in your box. If you if you don't, the blue one should work fine. Okay. We're going to communicate over Ethernet using the higher level TCP/IP protocol, which is the protocol of the internet. Um, so here, uh, to use this the internet protocol, every device must have what's known as an IP address. And we're going to talk about IP version 4 here, where every IP address is a 32-bit address. Okay, so with 32 bits, um, that's 4 billion different addresses, over 4 billion different addresses. When TCPI was first uh, um, developed, it was thought that 32-bit addresses and 4 billion, no one could imagine 4 billion uh, devices connected to the internet. Well. You know we're we're past that now, and we, we've kind of run out of this 32-bit uh, address space. So that spurred development of yet another version of IP called IP version six, and we're transitioning to IP version six now, and that uses 128-bit addresses, 
Um, and I think that's enough, I've heard, to give every atom in the universe its own IP address. Um, there have been a couple of other solutions to ensure that um, uh, we can continue to use IP version 4 for a while. Um, one, one of the big things that was done there is using um, net network address uh, translation so that you could um, uh, assign local area networks um, um, IP addresses um, that are non-routable and might be shared by um, a, a lot of different universities. For example, UE on most of their uh, computers I think uses a 10.10 dot network address. That that's that's a common one. And that's a, a non-routable IP um, uh, range, and that's a common one for universities to use for all of their lab and classroom computers. Now those um, non-routable IP addresses uh, means that we can't actually uh, from outside uh, reach a, a computer in one of the uh, in one of the labs or networks within the local within the UE network, that's fine. All the computers can talk to each other, but you can't just you can't reach one of the classroom computers from uh, um, uh, another computer outside the university network. Now we can go the other way, the font, the fine from a classroom computer out to like Google or Microsoft or wherever you want to go. It's just that we can't set up an internal computer as a server and have it reach. Um, outside. Now CS Server is a university computer but it also has a network interface to the larger network. It, it has um, a routable IP address and can actually be reached from, from um, anywhere. Um, anyway that, that whole technique is called network address translation that makes that possible and that, that's one of the things that was put in place or developed to extend IP version 4. Okay. So IP address, back to the main topic, the IP address is a 32-bit address um, and, and usually instead of uh, citing it as a, you know 32 bits and, and, and hexadecimal or you, know, you wouldn't want to use binary, instead we typically um, refer to the IP address in dotted quad notation. So 32 bits is 4 bytes. Um, uh, within, within a byte, um, the 8 bits, you can um, have decimal numbers between 0 and 255. So that 32-bit address is broken it up into, into 4 bytes. And then we, we typically, as humans, uh, talk about the IP address using a corresponding decimal notation. So there's four parts here. You know, here's, a, here's a network address, 100.10.0.224. So there'd be four numbers here. Each of these four numbers would be between zero and 255. Okay. Now, again, this is human notation. Internally, um, these are actually stored as binary numbers. Indeed, each of these bytes is uh, converted into its corresponding binary, and all four bytes are stored as a 32-bit binary number. Um, but this dotted quad notation is much easier uh, to, uh, for humans to remember than, a, than the 32-bit binary number. Okay. Um, the 32-bit IP address is completely separate and different from the 48-bit uh, uh, hardware address or MAC address I, I talked about earlier. Communication over the local LAN is done using Ethernet. That's, that's common, although there have been other lower-level technologies that have been used in the past. Okay. Um, but there's uh, as, um, a protocol known as the Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP, that's used to convert IP addresses to Ethernet addresses. Again, Ethernet addresses have to be used uh, on the local network. IP addresses, uh, IP addresses are, are used to, to, to access or communicate with computers outside our local network. Okay, so all communication packets on our local network use Ethernet addresses. Now, actually, on our, our local no network, you know, at the IP level, all our computers have you know IP numbers in this same address range. For you, it's 10.10. Whatever. Um, in order to communicate with uh, another computer and um, using IP uh, IP addressing, um, you know, our computer first determines that. 
Um, the, uh, the destination computer is on our local network by its IP address, you know, using the net mask, can determine that it's on our, our, on our local network, and then we'll do a broadcast and say, okay, what computer has this IP address? And then the, the computer that has that IP address responds. So the, the, the uh, computer that sent out that request, actually in that request packet, um, uh, has its return address, its return MAC address. So a computer responds um, delivering its MAC address and say, hey, that's me. And then, and then so now the source computer knows how to reach the destin destination can, and can properly format the Ethernet packets. But if the computer is not, if the destination computer is not on our local network, has an IP address that's somewhere else, our computer just passes the, forms an Ethernet packet to the router. Embedded in that Ethernet packet is the IP address, but it just uh, um, um, routes that packet to the router, sends that packet to the router using the router's MAC address. Okay, And then the router takes that packet apart, says, oh, this is destined for another, you know, an IP address that's on some other network, and sends it off appropriately. And the routers might be connected by Ethernet. They might be connected by, you know, some other, um, by fiber optic or something else that may use something completely different than Ethernet packets. Um, but that Ethernet packets are, are Ethernet packets are used on, on our local level. Okay. Um, when we're programming, um, we don't have to uh, worry about or even understand what lower level um, uh, protocols being used. You know, whether it's Ethernet or or that addressing that, that's all handled automatically and transparently for us. So that's pretty nice. You can program it at the, at the Ethernet level, but that's not internet networking programming okay that's that's completely different so and uh, that's rarely done okay most people um, program at the at the I, at TCP IP level okay so TCP IP communication is done entirely using IP addresses well you may say wait a minute um, you know when I use my web browser I never type in an IP address I type in google.com or csserver.evansville.edu well, what happens there is the first thing your computer does when, when you refer to a server by name, it translates that name to an IP address using something called dynamic name services or DNS. So your computer is aware of certain other computers called DNS servers. Um, it has their IP address and it contacts the a DNS server and says, here, I have this name, give me the IP address. So again, that's all done um, somewhat transparently. Um, you know, you as a user are using a web browser are completely unaware of it, but the, the, your web browser software first contacts a DNS server and asks for the IP address of CS server, for example. And then it sends out, it forms a, a request uh, using the IP address of uh, CS server um, and sends a sends a, a connection request to uh, CS server. Um, so the the software to do that has traditionally been get host by name. That's considered obsolete now. So they use at the pro for, at the programming level you use get address info. Um, I've left out the arguments there. So you use get address info that will automatically contact the DNS server and get the IP address um, that your computer then uses for all further communication with that destination. And it's that IP address that's actually embedded in the, in the network data packet and not, and, um, not uh, the actual name of the computer. Okay. Now initially, we're just going to be doing uh, communication between two computers that are on, are on our same local network. Again, DNS is not used for computers that are on the same local network. It's just when you need to go get outside your local network. Okay. So I think maybe I mentioned NetMask uh, a little earlier, but that's actually uh, what's used to split an IP address in the network and host parts. Okay, so for an IP address in dotted quad notation, uh, you might have corresponding net mass like this, 255, 255, 00. 
Um, 255 corresponds to all ones, a byte of all ones. And if you anded these two um, numbers, the IP address and the net mask at the binary level, uh, the zeros would set to zero the two lower bytes, and the ones here would pass through the two upper bytes. Okay, so that anding gives you the network address of the local area of the network. Um, so here in this case, the network address after this anding, we'd have 100.10.0.0. That's the that's the network address. Okay, and then all hosts on that local area network would then have two byte addresses. The lower two bytes um, um, uh, would have uh, host addresses of, of two bytes, uh, with, with two bytes that will allow a network of 65,000. Uh, I think uh, UE actually uses a net mask of 255.0.0.0, allowing two to the 24 host on uh, on our local area network, which is a tremendous number. So a net mask of 255.255.0.0 is common, or 255.255.255.0 is common. So that would allow for three bytes in the network part and 256 hosts on the network. But once we've got uh, an I, a network set up using this IP address, another address, another device uh, with IP address 100.10.50.4 would be on the same local network. Okay, um, because they've got the same network part of 100.10, and so um, and DNS wouldn't be used to resolve uh, uh, um, this IP address. Instead, ARP would be used um, if this is an Ethernet uh, network for the source to find the destination. But if you're trying to communicate to a computer that has an IP address of 100.12, that's on another network. Okay. And it would have to be reached via a network router. And so um, again, we might have to, if, if we don't, uh, if uh, we don't know the name uh, IP address mapping, DNS would be used to actually um, first give the name of that computer and then translate that to an IP address. Okay. Um, an IP address and set net mask can either be assigned by uh, to the device by the network administrator that's called static assignment and that's what we're going to do today or you can have another computer on your local area network that hands out these IP addresses uh, as the computer um, boots up that's how most modern computers are configured they're configured to use uh, DHCP to automatically get an IP address um, when they boot up every computer on the local area network needs to have its own unique IP address so um, you should you should never really uh, in these days actually uh, assign a static IP address it may clash with another computer that's already uh, that has that IP address already on the on the local network now we're going to with we've only got we're going to have a local network consisting of uh, two devices or nodes on our network. One will be the net burner and the other will be uh, the Ethernet card or Ethernet uh, USB Ethernet uh, um, adapter we're going to plug into our uh, desktop or laptop computer. So it's a network with only two nodes on the network and we're going to assign IP addresses using using uh, static assignment. Otherwise we'd have to set up a DHCP server on, on our desktop or laptop and I don't want to do that. So um, again, DHCP makes things a lot easier for the network administrator. Uh, prior to DHCP, the network administrator had to keep this long list of you know what computers had what IP addresses, and uh, so DHCP just kind of automates all of that. It makes automates that process. Um, most networks again use DHCP to assign IP addresses to all devices except for the servers and, and routers or gateways on the, on the network, which may have fixed IP addresses. Okay. So again, we're going to be using static IP assignment. I'll show you how to do that in the exercise. Um, the, the original program on the NetBurner, you know, when it, when it came out of the box, brand new, requested an IP address via DHCP so the board could be immediately connected to a network with a DHCP server. Now we've long since overwritten that original program though. We've, we've done several projects, several exercises, 
So that program is no longer there. We could transfer over a program that requests an IP uh, address using DHCP, but uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to set it up uh, to use a static IP address. So we, we have to assign that IP address by booting into the monitor programming monitor program use, using MTTY and we'll, we'll set the IP address up over the serial link and we'll do, go through that in the exercise today. We're going to use uh, what's known as a private network. Again, these are non-routable IP addresses. So uh, the, the data will be passed just between the net burner and our computer. Um, we're going to set up the net burner and it may be set um, already with this IP address. Um, you know, it may have been set up previously. If not, we'll set it up in the exercise to use an address of 190, uh, should be 192 there instead of 191, um, uh, 192.168.17.2 with a net mask of 255, 255. Um, and then uh, we'll use uh, on our on our computer, a 192.168.17.1 address with a net mask of 255.255.0. So that will be either on our USB Ethernet adra adapter, if that's what you're using, or I think a few students said they already had a wired Ethernet on your laptop, and we'll configure the wired Ethernet to, to use that particular address. Okay. So, um, and I'll go through the steps here so you can cover, refer back to this, but we'll go through this in, in the exercise. So I'm going to go, I, I'm not going to take the time now to go through these steps. I'll demonstrate them in another video um, uh, as we go through uh, today's exercise. So connect both the serial uh, cable and the red network cable. Again, if you don't have the red network cable, just use the blue one. That will be fine. Uh, boot into the monitor program and type which you know, hold, press the reset and and uh, type in capital A on the keyboard and press enter. And then instead of typing FLA, we're going to type setup. Okay, um, to verify the IP address and net mask. Um, if it's 192.168.17.2 with a corresponding uh, net mask of 255.255.255.0. Uh, you can just leave it. You don't have to change anything. Uh, if that's not the case, then you're going to have to set the IP address, and there are commands to do that. Again, we'll look at that in, in the exercise. You don't have to worry about any of the other network settings. Like I said, we're get, not going to use a, a DNS server or a, a gateway or router to another network. Okay. Um, we then also have to assign uh, an IP address to the other device that's on this local network, and, th and that's our the Ethernet card connected to um, our computer. And so um, it's typical for uh, you know routers on a local network to be assigned IP address one. Uh, so we're going to assign that address to our uh, desktop or laptop computer. So it will have 192.168.17.1. Again, these need to be different. There there are two Ethernet adapters or controllers here in this local network. One on the eth one on the net burner board and one in your local area one in your uh, one on your desktop or laptop computer. And you know it's either got a, a physical Ethernet adapter on that desktop or laptop or you're going to be using one of these USB um, network uh, uh, dongles that I handed out uh, when you got your net, net burner. Um, uh, I, I will mention if you use your laptop or desktop um, on uh, a local area network, um, you're not using one of the network dongles, and and so you're you're sharing this wired Ethernet connection between the net burner and you know another your and it's also your connection to the internet. You'll need to reset. Um, that uh, Ethernet card back to using DHCP before connecting it to your regular network. Hopefully none of you are doing that. You know, you're using either Wi-Fi uh, to connect to the Internet, and then uh, you're, you're going to use this, uh, this USB um, Ethernet adapter um, um, 
to connect to uh, the net burner or you're using Wi-Fi and then you're using a wired uh, connector on your on your laptop to connect to the the net burner and you're not going to share a wired connection between the net burner and and the internet that would become a pain because you'd have to make the switch back and forth every time okay so in Windows uh, to, to set up our the TCP IP connection on the on our uh, USB dongle it's uh, um, you know it's it's in a settings wizard that looks something like this and I'll, I'll walk through this in the exercise today um, and then uh, here I think uh, you, you select IP version 4 and then properties and then you'll see a window like this where it says you obtain an IP address automatically that's probably the default setting um, you'll need to change that obtaining an IP address automatically means you're going to use DHCP which we are not using so use the following IP address again it may say something like this you need to change that to 192.168.17.1 with the, the, the corresponding net mask of 255, 255, 255, 0. Okay. Um, okay. Um, to configure the network interface on the, on the net burner, uh, from a programmer standpoint, you have to include the IP.h header file, and then you also have to call uh, the initialize stack function at the beginning of user main. That initializes the, the Ethernet controller on the net burner. Uh, and sets up the software so that we can actually do TCP IP networking. Um, to transfer, and then the other thing that we want to do is be able to transfer new programs over, over our Ethernet connection. In order to do that, you'll ha also have to call another function at the beginning of user main. It's called enable auto update. Okay, and to use that, you'll have to include another header file at the beginning of your program as well. So. Again, if, um, if you don't have this part, you'll have to transfer programs over the, the serial link. But if you have that, um, uh, th then, then you'll be able to transfer new programs over the Ethernet link. Okay. So, so this is kind of what that, that'll look like. Initialize stack, enable auto update, um, and then the rest of our program. Okay. So, um, We've talked a little bit about TCP IP networking. I've got this last slide that, that you know, I've used the term stack here re repeatedly. Um, the TCP IP uh, network model is considered a, a stack model. You know, we're, we're at the lower slot layer, you've got the different physical network uh, um, specifications, Ethernet being one. There are others. Um, you know, most of these are, are obsolete or only used in high-speed networks or networks between routers. So frame relay and ATM, um, again, for local area networks, probably what you're most experienced with is, is Ethernet. Right above that is what's called the, the, the Internet layer or the networking layer. Um, this is the layer that takes, takes care of getting your network packet from its source to its destination and that's that's using the IP address so it's here where routers and things like that typically operate okay. and then above that you have the different transport layers um, and TCP is a particular um, connection oriented protocol that, in, that has error checking built in so if you use TCP you don't have to worry about uh, whether the, the packets get to the destination or not, at least as, as from a programmer standpoint, or you don't have to worry about them um, arriving without error. That's all kind of done by the software automatically for you. So it's, so it's really nice. The other commonly uh, con, um, transport layer protocol is UDP. That's typically used for, for streaming services where you know we don't care if there's perhaps a, a bit error in a, in a packet. Um, it's also not connection oriented. We, we just send a packet out there. We have no guarantee that it's actually going to arrive at its destination. It might be dropped. Um, there's also others that are used for, I think this is the Internet Gateway um, messaging protocol, I think which is to set up multicast. 
and then ICMP is the control protocol. I think that that's, for example, what you know, when you ping another computer, um, uh, ICMP is actually used. And at the highest layer, which is also called the application layer, um, this is you know where all of the uh, higher le highest level protocols that you use like. Telnet, which is obsolete, that's been, uh, it was not very secure. It's been re replaced by SSH, which would also uh, uh, exist up here. FTP, again, that's kind of an obsolete protocol because it, um, it, uh, it was not secure. So, you know, SCP or SFTP have been used as uh, modern secure replacements. Um, this is the simple mail transfer protocol. So that, that's used to actually send email. Um, uh, DNS, I mentioned, uh, RIP is uh, a, a routing protocol. Um, this is a monitoring protocol. Of course, again, that may be due to the age of this particular slide, but, but the, probably the most used application protocol today is HTTP or HTTPS, which is a secure version of that. Um, I do have uh, Another optional lecture I'm going to put together, um, uh, which which talks about networking in a bit more detail and, and talks about how computers are, are connected to a local area network and, and talk about IP addressing and ARP addressing and how all that works a little bit. Um, and it should be a relatively short video. Again, it's optional if you've already taken the, the networking class. Um, uh, you're probably not going to learn anything from it, um, but uh, you know if you if you've forgotten stuff from the networking class, or uh, you're interested, or, or this is all new to you, uh, I wanted to provide a little bit more of additional information or reinforce what's in this video. So that's it for the the lecture part of the video today, except for this this optional one on TCP/IP networking. Um, there is an exercise that we'll go through where we'll actually set up our, our NetBurner board today.